Me Too show after two years of not having the event. Thank you. As many of you know, we changed our name on January 1, 2022 to Northwest Auto Care Alliance. We are still the same association, only with a new name. Please continue to be on the lookout for new and exciting benefits available to all of our NWACA members. We have a lot of exciting opportunities coming down the pike. Now I would like to introduce our chairman of the board, Mark Simons. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you for all you've done over these past few months of allowing us to continue the strength of our organization. So thank you, Brenda. If we can get a round of applause for her, please. While Nawaka is always looking to give back to its members, one of the ways we can do it is to offer specialized ATE pricing available only to Nawaka members. But membership isn't, but membership in Nawaka is more, uh, not always about discounts. Membership is about many things, is what, like networking, training. Networking and training are in, in our DNA. Networking could be a fancy word of saying having people. And when I say having people, I mean having friends. Friends you can call with questions, issues, or even disasters. When your shop is a member and you need some help, have someone at your shop call the regional office and tell them what you're struggling with. They will be able to assist you by maybe having a mentor shop or someone else reach out to you, and it's that simple. A little closer? Okay, thank you. <laughs> when you're a member, you have someone to call that cares about the industry and understands the efforts it takes to do what we do, day in and day out. Someone that cares if you succeed and cares about our industry. Give us a try next time you're in a jam, and if your shop isn't a member yet, call anyway. Let us know how we how being a member adds value to what you do. If it inspires you, talk to any of the folks that are wearing the Nawaka or ATA shirts and ask them what Nawaka does for them. Thanks again for support Nawaka in our industry. And one last thing today at the trade show, um, the ITAC booth is there and being manned. Um, if you don't want to ITAC, it is it's our technical um, apprenticeship program that Nawaka has. Um, it's, it's a way for us to be part of the community and also uplift new technicians into the industry starting at the uh, school levels. Um, with that, we also have one of, uh, stop by the pit crew booth because there's an opportunity for a uh, pit crew to donate funds through a program um, for that ITAC program. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone's aware of that and what ITAC is. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Isaac from Whirlpack. Thank you, Isaac. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Uh, I'm Isaac with the Whirlpack Training Institute. I am the manager for the hybrid and alternative fuels program. So that includes all of our hybrid, electric, and diesel vehicles. Now, Whirlpack and our sister companies, Advanced, Advanced Professional, CarQuest, and Auto Parts International, are proud to support ATE. Brenda, uh, the Northwest Auto Care Alliance, and all of the staff, volunteers, and automotive professional and attendees and members that make this event possible. Thank you all for coming. Uh, WorldPack and CarQuest continue our dedication to the betterment of the automotive industry and are sponsoring 23 courses here at ATE today and this weekend. Uh, and we have, uh, we, we've worked really hard with countless hours to develop some of the best training material in the country that we would like you guys to, to, to enjoy. Now, at this time, I'd ask that everybody stand and give Brenda and the ATE team, all of the instructors from the WTI, CTI teams, and all the other instructors that are here to bring back in-person training this year. This would not be possible without the Northwest Auto Care Alliance. Now, 
With that being said, it's an honor for me to introduce today's keynote speaker, Gary Smith. Gary's automotive industry experience is extensive to say the least. He's worked in most shop positions, including shop foreman, service advisor, parts and service manager, fixed op director, technical field engineer, warranty audit consultant, and most relevant to this event, certified ASE and GM master technician. Gary specializes in teaching advanced diagnostic techniques and methodology, including physical testing with lab scopes, pressure transducers, scan data, and five gas analysis, signal acquisition and analysis, fuel and lubrication technologies, as well as vehicle communication and data bus diagnostics. Now, Gary also has a side gig as Benjamin Franklin's 21st century doppelganger, and he will be available for autographs after the presentation. Now, in addition to advanced diagnostic trainings, Gary's dedication to the future of our industry includes his company, Diagnation, which supports technician with on, technicians with on-car remote technical assistance across the country, and he hosts train-the-trainer sessions with schools and automotive programs. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Smith. All right. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing great? All right. Well, I want to welcome everybody back to our, what I'm excited to say is our first time since coronavirus, back in the room, hugging and fellowshipping and have a good time. This is awesome. Sorry about my voice, but this is awesome. Okay. Now, I want to thank from the bottom of my heart, everyone sitting in this room uh, for being a very dedicated part of this industry. We see new faces every year, but we see all of the guys and the ladies in the room who show up year after year after year to better their careers. And I want to salute you for that. I also would like to thank Isaac and the World Pack crew. It's a real honor to be with a training team as esteemed as WTICTI, and it is my pleasure uh, to represent them here today. So I want to thank you guys for having me here. Now, I'd like to get this room fired up. And the way I want to fire you up is to start with something that we don't hear every day. And that is that the people that are sitting in front of me right now are some of the smartest, most focused craftsmen that exist in any industry bar none. There is no group of people with more stick to more focus, and more never give up attitude than your well-studied automotive technicians. We, we are an elite group of people that really get things done. I'm so proud to be a part of this group. And you guys should walk through your day every single day, whether you're at the shop or the grocery store or at church, wherever you go with your head held high, because there are not a lot of people in any industry that have the skill set that everyone in this room possesses to get their job done. It is a tough job to be an automotive operator, whether you're a shop owner, a writer, or a technician. Can you guys agree with that? This is a tough industry, okay? And we are the cream of the crop, everyone sitting in this room. Today, I want to go through something that I have been kind of working on and stumbling through for the last number of years, which is I want to bring a paradigm into our mind to focus us on our next stage of growth, technically. You guys have to admit that we are drinking amounts of information that are akin to sucking water out of a three inch fire hose. I mean, would you guys agree it's gotten that bad in the last few years? 
okay? It used to be that for years and years through the decades, for example, the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, even the 70s and 80s, technology moved at a pace that the average human could absorb and internalize and learn and apply. We are way, way beyond that with automotive technology today, guys. We're moving in quantum leaps. And what that means is that every dedicated automotive professional in this room must, must study unceasingly and be willing to move with that technology, which means we gotta pick up our pace. We gotta get more serious about learning the down and dirties about how the electronics work in these cars. If you're a service writer or a shop owner, we have to get more motivated to do a better job with those phone skills, a better job with the appointment, capturing those customers, feeding those technicians with the work they need, getting the proper descriptions on the repair order and interacting with that customer in a way that means trust and business. I think we've got a cool little thing for you today. In a world where we're drinking information like a fire hose, a new breed of automotive technician is born. And that is the automotive SIGINT specialist. Now let me explain what I mean by SIGINT. A SIGINT specialist, we're gonna talk about the intelligence world here versus the automotive world and we're gonna smash them together. Those of you that have been fans of Soviet spy novels and movies about CIA, espionage and so forth, probably remember the guy sitting in the van with the headphones on, listening to phone conversations and stealing computer messages. That, in the intelligence world, is a signal intelligence specialist. The acronym for that is SIGINT. Okay, we're gonna walk through what it means to be an automotive SIGINT specialist. Because when we look at what the intelligence world SIGINT specialists have to do to be effective at their craft, we can move that right over to the automotive industry and put ourselves right in that position. What does it take to be a SIGINT specialist today in the automotive industry? Well, we know there's quantum leaps in technology. We've already spoken about that, right? And we are having trouble keeping up with that pace of technology. Anybody that's intellectually honest, including myself or any instructor in this room is going to admit that. There's so much coming at us. We need to be able to really stay on top of our game. So how do we do that? Well, we need to start thinking and acting and governing ourselves as signal intelligence specialists. But it takes a team. It's this, this talk is not simply to the technicians in the room, although from a signal intelligence specialist uh, standpoint, it is. But signal intelligence involves the whole entire team. It involves the people that are gathering the intelligence, disseminating the intelligence, filtering that intelligence down the chain so that the hard work and intelligence guy on the street can practice his tradecraft and get the answers he needs to defend our great country. Now we do it a little different, okay? But if we wanna break down what SIGINT means to the automotive industry, consider this. A SIGINT specialist in the intelligence world is made up of multiple trade crafts, right? It, and for us in the automotive industry, it certainly is not just about the nuts and bolts of taking a car apart and putting it back together or using a scan tool or a scope. All those are components of being good at your trade craft, but not one of those rules. They all come together to make a shop run well, okay? An automotive SIGINT specialist must, can, must possess several traits and skills that are critical to us being successful working on modern day cars, especially in the ADAS era. Let's unpack this thought for a minute and take a look at what we actually need to perform our jobs. So what kind of trade crafts are involved here? Well, in the intelligence world, ELINT, E-L-I-N-T, ELINT, simply means electrical intelligence. So you're gonna have specialists that are electrical intelligence specialists that know how to go gather those signals, okay? And that's the guy in the van that we talked about with the earmuffs on, listening to conversations. Do you guys think that we have electrical intelligence needs in our industry, yes or no? Absolutely, okay? Now, put this one into the mix, because we all have to be a team. How about human intelligence? Do you guys think 
for a minute that we can get by with what we do in the bays in that shop without proper human intelligence. We need our service advisors, our shop owners, and our shop foremen to continue to hone their human intelligence skills in order to bring us profitable tickets and customers that understand what's truly going on with the car, no surprises at five o'clock kind of thing. Would you guys agree with that? So the advisors and the shop owners that are in this room are just important as important to this discussion, maybe if not more so than the tech working on the car. And it all comes together. How about Imint? In the intelligence world, Imint means image intelligence. Guys, do we use image intelligence, intelligence within our business? Yes. In the form of all kinds of documents, pictures, documentation of what's wrong with the car, image intelligence is a big thing for us today. How about this one, communications intelligence? Now, what I'm specifically referring to there is not just the human communication element, but network communication for those techs sitting in the room. We're going to get into that in detail in a minute. This one here is an int that is not used in the intelligence world. I made this up last night. It's called mechint. But I want to key in on that for a second because one thing I find as I go through my walk in life as a, a technical trainer and a, and a guy that does diagnostic hotline is that a lot of people don't make the connection between the mechanical and the electrical. We have to study mechanical just as hard as we study diagnostics and electrical. Here's why. The modulation of circuits in and out of our PCMs, guess what the modulator is, guys? It's the engine. The engine is the modulator that provides the signals that go through the computer that runs the car. So we not only have to have electrical knowledge and intelligence in our diagnostics, we have to blend that with mechanical. We have to blend, blend it with chemical. We have to blend it with all kinds of different skills, hydraulic, gear meshing. Think about what we have to know as automotive technicians and put that head up high because not many people can absorb what we do and perform like we do every single day. To me, that's powerful for those people in this room. Now, the final int, is an intelligent int, and that's called mass int. This is my favorite of all the intelligence that make up SIGINT people, because mass int is where we technicians play and we instructors play, and that is in the measurement and signatures intelligence. Let me be very specific about what the signatures part means. Every one of us in this room gets the measurement part of measurement and signatures. That's being able to hook up a scope. That's being able to pull a waveform. That's being able to get the information or the data that you need. However, the signatures part of that, to me as an instructor, is the most important part of that equation because it is the signatures intelligence that allows us to understand the components of the waveform coming across that screen. And that's where there's a huge disconnect in this industry. Lots of guys know how to hook up scopes, but a lot of us need a lot of work in the signatures intelligence area, meaning what does that waveform mean? What is it telling us? Where is my anomaly? Is this noise real or is it causing our problem? All of these things make up a measurement and signatures intelligence specialist. Now think about the, the things that are on that screen right now. We have to be all of them, don't we guys? and girls. We have to be all of them at the same time in order to successfully run a shop. Well, if we break it down into the details, the Elint guy, which we are, must, must understand electrical laws at their root level. Meaning, you know, I know nobody in this industry likes the word basic. As a matter of fact, everybody runs from the word basic. If you name a class basic, that's a class with about zero people in it. But yet, even for the most advanced specialist or instructor in this room, I submit to you, that's where our answers are, is in the basic electrical laws, not out in the high technology of data packets and scoping and so forth. Because you can't understand any of that unless you internalize the physical laws on a root level. We all, no matter what our level in the business, need to go back and study that carefully. We must be able to trace inputs and output signals right? We must, must be able to interpret our test results positively and correctly, lest we misdiagnose the car. We must 
understand better electronics, meaning not electricity, but yeah, we need to understand electricity better, but we need to understand the electronics, the TikTok of what's going on inside that PCM, inside that airbag module, in order to get that diagnosis right. Automotive technicians need to come out of the linear DC world and start to study deeper into electronics and electrical theory in order to understand the new ADAS systems, radio frequency driven systems that these cars are now running on. We are, and this is not a negative, it's an opportunity. We are sorely behind in some of those areas, I think we can admit. We've been in the linear DC voltage world for so long, we need to really puff up these electrical intelligence skills. And we must hone all of these skills so that we can build our own cognitive test plans around some of these ridiculous DTC charts these manufacturers throw us down. Would you guys agree with that? That's what being an, an LNT specialist means. We have to be an LNT specialist because we're facing new technologies like 48 volt systems. That is our future for the next 20 years. That's our bridge technology, 48 volt systems. Between where we are now with hybrid EVs and the supposed demise of the ICE or internal combustion engine somewhere in between 2035 and 2050. If we can bridge that gap by learning new electrical skills like inductance, impedance, and how that figures into our circuit diagnosis, we're going to become very successful and we're going to be remaining relevant in our industry. My fear is that a lot of guys aren't taking, those in this room are, but a lot of guys in our industry aren't taking that study seriously enough and they're quickly becoming irrelevant based on the cars that are coming out in front of us in our bays. Okay. Now, if I say anything that provides a powerful statement for you up here today, I want it to be this. We must live our testing. Think about that. We must live our testing. We must not identify our testing. We must not guess. We must not throw modules and parts at the car until we get lucky and it's fixed. We must live our testing. These components are way too expensive and way too difficult to, to unplug and plug into these cars and get programmed for us to be playing the guesswork game like we did in the 1980s. That's what I want to mo motivate everybody to today. And here's why. Because we are just guessing without physical testing. And that's a fact. That's a fact. I see it on the hotline every single day. So how do we hone our LN skills? We go back to the basic laws of electricity and we study them and study them. And I don't mean just Ohm's law. We, everything we diagnose goes back to these laws. You've got all these coming up on the screen, Ohm's law, Faraday's law, Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. Very important stuff for us to internalize lest we miss the waveform and what it's telling us on the screen. Amper's law, the right hand and left hand laws for current for motors and generators are gonna be important for technicians to internalize coming into the future with EV cars. We have to start buffing up on this stuff. So we had some industry experts show up at Vision to teach uh, basic automotive history from the 1920s that are up on the screen right now. One of them was called Adamus Edison. And the other guy, I don't know, but they had some silly wigs on and boy, did they have a good time at that class. Right? But one of the neat things about that class that we did is if you'll notice the bottom center picture, we've got a bunch of old equipment sitting there. That little white signal tracer that runs on a vacuum tube chassis from 1948 solved a problem for a client of ours locally that had an RF signaling problem with a Dodge that had been to the dealer twice and been to three different independents and couldn't figure it out. We walked in the door with a 75-year-old vacuum tube device and pulled the RF out of the air, figured out what was wrong with the car, and fixed it. I got to tell you, the looks on those technicians' faces when that vacuum tube started glowing green and we pulled the frequency out of the air was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. They were like, what? But you know what, guys? Sometimes we got to do some fun stuff and you know, have a fun class like this where the instructors are being goofballs, right? The point of the whole class that we were doing here that you see the picture on the screen for is that nothing, nothing, nothing has changed from a measurement and analysis standpoint since 1906 when Henry Ford's car first came out on the market. Nothing has changed. 
Only the technology's gotten more complex. That's all, guys, but at the root level, the testing is no different than it was in the days of Henry Ford. We need to embrace that and go back and learn it because a lot of us skipped over it. Human intelligence. A human specialist hones their human communication skills unceasingly. We must be able to read personality, mood, and body language properly if we are to gather the important intelligence for that repair order. Cranks no start, check, and advise is not sufficient human intelligence for modern-day technician to take that car and successfully fix it. We got we to gotta squeeze that information out. We got to get it out of that customer, and we've got to translate it to the ticket properly to avoid the ugly wild goose chases on some of these diagnostics. We will squeeze the information from you. And if we do not squeeze the information from you, we will send you to the back room to see Olga. Do not be concerned with the size of her hands. <laughs> Guys, we got to pull, pull some crazy stuff out of these customers sometimes, because guess what? Sometimes customers lie. <laughs> lie. And we got to be able to disseminate that. That's what a good human specialist does on that service desk every single day. We got to work on phone skills, information gathering, right? Human is a major key to success for that shop to extract the right information to have that customer have a very positive fix it right the first time experience. So the human specialists in this room are just as important as any technician that we're speaking to today. Imint, image intelligence. What does that mean? A good SIG intelligence specialist in the automotive industry anyway, gathers his or her information first before jumping into a diagnostic. Man, as a hotline operator, can I tell you, that is a huge, huge weakness for the people in our industry, even the good guys. Why? Call the hotline because you need a silver bullet. I get it. We're all in the flat rate world or we all get paid on production. But guess what? In modern day cars, there are no silver bullets during a diagnostic. If you think you are, that there are, I feel bad for your customer because a lot of these people are getting two or three parts chucked on the car before we get the right one that was failed because we're trying to get that silver bullet, whether it be from Identifix or Diagnation Hotline or Autologic or any, you know, you call your instructor friend. Look, those are silver bullets. We must live our physical testing. And any good instructor in this room, I know I've talked to many of them, will tell you, you must live your physical testing or you're just guessing, all right? Now, the other thing that's imminent for us, image intelligence, is TSBs, technical service bulletins. Visuals on where that component is located. Wiring diagrams. Theory of circuit operation and description. That is a massive piece of information that a lot of people bypass when they're working on a car. Schematics, right? That's huge. You got to pull your schematics and your TSBs and your circuit description and op before you start working on that car. How about this one? It's in becoming increasingly important today, isn't it? Boroscoping the inside of an engine or something to get that physical damage recorded without disassembling the vehicle. All of these encompass the imminent portion of a good automotive signal intelligence specialist. He's got to leverage that information daily. Comment, communications intelligence. How does that translate to us? Network analysis, guys. Bunch of you guys were sitting in my CAN bus class. Bunch of you be this afternoon sitting in Adam Robertson's communication class, which is one of the best out there as far as I'm concerned. The guy's a dynamo with that kind of stuff on communications, okay? Network analysis. Getting to the answer on a string of U codes without spending six days and 12 modules on a partridge in a pear tree. Right? Because that's a serious thing today. We're getting tons and tons of these communication problems. We need to understand the balanced antenna for the radio system known as the CAN bus. It is a radio, guys. Look it up and study it. The balanced line provides us an antenna for the radio to speak its language to the computers in the car. Packet transmission, reception, CAN bus and flex node operation. All these things are necessary for a tech to be a comment specialist. Signal analysis, big, big, big one right there. Signal analysis, 
We're going to get to that in a second. Understanding voltage and current behavior. All of these play into being a good comment specialist. Now, all of these are part of the trade craft. Like I said, any good SIGINT specialist in the intelligence world has a number of skill sets. We're naming the ones that automotive people have to have. The biggest one here is MASINT, measurement and signatures analysis. What do we need for this? Well, the MECINT part that I mentioned to you before is critical because it is the modulator that everything's being measured against in that PCM and in that wiring harness. We have to study the basics of physics and mechanical movement, study lubrication, fuels, and combustion, which means we have to have some chemist in us. Measurement of mechanical timing, leakage, vacuum, pressures. I'm looking over here at a couple of really good instructors in the back of the room, G. Trulia and Eric Ziegler back here, who are those specialists that teach us each time we come to these events. Mechanical timing, leakage, vacuum, pressure waveforms, all that's very important to the mechan part. Gearing, ratios, meshing, camshaft basing, variable valve timing and lift technology. We have to develop all these massint skills or mechan skills in order to put it in the mix with massint. Measures and signatures intelligence. What does that mean? We have to start exploring new frontiers that are new to us as automotive guys, such as XY mode on your scope, scan data, make use of it, learn it, understand it, signal coupling, think simple concepts like that that are misunderstood. We've got to get help with them. We've got to get better at them. Signatures analysis, that's a big one. What is that scope screen really trying to tell me? And without the basic laws, you're already lost. That's why I'm saying, Nobody in this room, no matter what your level of advancement, should ever balk at a basic level class. You would be shocked at what you can pull out of some of these basic level classes. Go to them, sit in them, refresh yourself, get better. Intermittent captures, learning new methods for testing frequency, radio frequency, and AC currents. Guys, I'm telling you, if you hear anything today, hear that. There's a lot of AC current and RF activity going on in our cars. It's in the TPMS, it's in the Bluetooth connections with the sync system on the dash. It's all over the car. It's the RFA. It's the immobilizer that starts the car with a push button. All of that runs on RF energy. We are sorely behind in studying things AC and RF. Get your head in that game and go down the rabbit hole. It's the best learning curve you'll ever do. You'll bring yourself to that next level. For example, what you see on the screen on the right side is an XY shot of a live CAN bus talking. And I'm going to tell you, in the next 12 months, you're going to see some incredible new methodology for diagnosing networks. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. Keep your eye out next year around this time. We're going to have an industry-changing class coming out on new network diagnostic techniques that involve things like this. However, you have to learn what XY mode is and learn what inductance is in order to read that waveform. But what if I can get you to not have to depower the car, put all the modules to sleep for two hours, open the door, prep everything, so that I can get a simple ohms reading across pin six and 14? What if we could hook a scope up like that on the right side of the screen and say in five seconds, it's a good balanced bus, move on. These are the types of technologies we got to get excited about and embrace as automotive technicians. Go deeper, learn more. Find an Elmer. Now you guys are probably sitting there going, what in God's creation is an Elmer? If you're a ham radio operator in this room, you know exactly what an Elmer is. Because an Elmer in the ham radio world is your mentor. He teaches you everything you need to know to successfully and legally operate a ham radio and call up to space stations, talk across the world to Italy, fix that radio that's in your ham shack that you can't get running, learn about antennas and transmitters. That Elmer is called an Elmer. I did the research on this because I'm like, what the hell is Elmer about? Right, and it turns out that in the 1920s, the guys that invented radio and amateur radio before commercial radio came out had a guy named Elmer that knew everything, that was teaching guys around the city of New York all about amateur radio, and the name just stuck. So the mentor in the ham radio world is the Elmer. Well, let me tell you what. I am standing in front of some of the best Elmers 
that exist on planet Earth right here and right now. I can't name them all, but I want to name a few. Adam Robertson, one of the best Elmers and coaches I know. That guy will answer the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning to help a tech that's stuck in the car. Dave Hobbs, Dave Shadeen and Cecil on the management side, on the human side. Eric Ziegler, Scott Shotton, G. Trulia, Mylan. Look at the resources we have in this room to learn and expand our horizons. Guys, we are truly a blessed industry. Find an Elmer. You know, I take being an Elmer for you guys pretty seriously, and I think every instructor in this room does. We help coach and befriend and help to get better people who have husbands and wives and families and businesses to run. I take that as a serious personal responsibility, and I guarantee you every other Elmer in this room does the same. That's why they're here for you today and with you. Let's walk together and get better together, okay? Now, the Elmer is not just a coach, but he's a mentor, a steady hand, and a friend in a time of need. We are in a time of need in this industry to get better at what we're doing. <clears throat> so let me close with this. I mentioned this in the beginning, guys. We are skilled people. How many professionals in any industry do you know that can internalize mechanical, hydraulic, electrical, chemical, combustion? How many people can do what we do? Not many. We need to hold that head high. We need to continue to go into work every day and solve those problems, but do them better and quicker and get better at what we do. We are an elite group of specialized craftsmen whose job is to support citizens, industry, and business and keep this great nation moving. That's who we are and be proud of it every single day. Guys, I want to thank you so much for your attention today. I'm sorry to take up so much of your lunch, but I wanted to come up here today and just kind of reiterate who we are. We're a proud bunch of people that can get it done, and we do get it done, and every one of us in this room should take credit for being where you are right now. I'd ask God to bless you, bless your families, to bless your business, and I definitely ask God to bless the United States of America. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk to you later. Ha, huh, how about now? All right. Thank you, Gary. That was amazing. How about another hand for Gary? So is everybody enjoying ATE so far? Yeah? It's amazing, right? Who doesn't want to be here? We're all the cool kids. So next year, mark your calendars. We already have it scheduled. It's going to be March 31st through April 2nd, so we want you to be here. Make sure to sign up early so that you can get the classes that you want. And don't forget the scavenger hunt tonight. We have lots of prizes. Need to have it turned into the registration desk by 645 um, so that you can win some amazing stuff. Don't forget to go by the ITAC booth. Support our young technicians coming into the industry. Help us get some donations out there for free. Doesn't